Creating the storage definitions directly in the pod is a little bit hard to manage. Now let's look at how to do this in a more controlled and managed way. Administrators can create the persistent volumes for centrally manage all the storage solutions and the users, the developers can create persistent volume claims to mount it into the pods. Volumes are created within a file system with the size, with some characteristics such as volume IDs and the names. A Kubernetes persistent volumes has following attributes. It is provisioned with either dynamically or by an administrator. We will be talking about how to do that with the manual provisioning as well as with the dynamic provisioning. And it is created with a particular file system. As an example, if you are having a Kubernetes cluster in AWS, you can use AWS EBS and in Azure, you can use Azure disk or Azure files. In GCP, you can use GCE persistent disk. In on-premise, you have the options of using NFS storage, host path or local storage kind of options. And also these volumes has a particular size, whether that is 10 GB or 5 GB or 50 GB, you can define that. And also it has the characteristics such as what is my volume ID and the name based on your storage provider. And also need to mention that it has access modes based on the supported storage provider, such as read write once, we call it RWO mode. By the name implies you can use it for both read and write but the volume can only be mounted into one node in your Kubernetes cluster. Read-only many ROX mode can be used only for read-only access, but it can be mounted into multiple nodes in your Kubernetes cluster. The other mode is read-write many RWX. Uh, you have both read-write access and the volume can be mounted into multiple nodes in your Kubernetes cluster with that access mode. You need to check the volume provider documentation for what are the supported access modes. So as you see in this diagram, EBS volumes, Azure disk, host path supports read write once access mode only. But when it comes to NFS volumes, uh, which supports all of these access modes. Here are two examples of persistent volumes. You can see we have the kind persistent volume and we can provide a name. Uh, under the metadata and under the spec section, you can define what are my access modes. It can be multiple access modes as well. And the capacity we can define, it is one gig at this moment. And then based on the volume type, there will be different configurations. If it is AWS, you can use AWS Elastic Block Storage. And after that, you can define its configurations like volume ID and the FS type. So if you want to use the same kind of scenario where host path needs to be used, you can use host path and then provide what is my path. So these are just uh, some examples. You can go into the documentation and find out more details about what are the configurations, what are the additional volume types that can be used in these definitions. Need to mention one more thing here. After consuming the volume, what to do with the volume is defined using the reclaim policy under the spec persistent volume claim policy section. Persistent volumes can have various reclaim policies, including delete, retain, and recycle. In the delete reclaim policy, deletion removes both the persistent volume object in the communities as well as in the associated storage asset in the external infrastructure like in AWS EBS, Azure Disk or etc. When you use the retain policy, when the persistent volume claim is deleted, the persistent volume is still exist and the volume is considered released. With few additional steps, the administrator can make this volume available for another mount into a pod. Recycle reclaim policy is used to make sure this volume is available when it is released from a claim and this is deprecated and now you need to use dynamic provisioning instead of using the recycle reclaim policy. Once you have the persistent volume YAML definition, you can apply it using kubectl apply minus f and the file name or kubectl create minus f file name. After that, the volume will be created and you can find out what are the volumes available using kubectl get pv command.